at all can possible. But um, anyway, uh, I'm just going to. I'm not going to start over. I am just going to hit a few things about winning battles. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them and said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And all authority that, that is that of, of God, all the authority uh, in the world through God has been given to Christ. But we look and fast forward to John 17 where Jesus is praying uh, before he goes to the cross. And his prayer is, the main theme of that prayer is that Lord, make them one as we are one. Bring us into a place of unity. And as, as you read the prayer there, it looks like maybe Jesus is only praying for just his disciples, but then he goes and clarifies it. And uh, I think verse 23 where he says that, uh, you know, this prayer is not just for those that follow me. Those are for those that will believe in the name of Jesus Christ. So it was a prayer for everyone that God's desire really is for unity. And uh, if you look at, uh, at what the, the important things for Christ was, they ask what was the most important uh, commandment. It was to love God, and then the second one is to love your neighbors yourself. It said, and everything is wrapped up in these two things, and if we can get to that place that we can, can walk out in love and walk out in unity, I think we're fulfilling the call of Christ. It's a hard thing to do sometimes. But yet God still desires that. That's, that was his prayer, that, that his church be a church in unity. And we see across the world and, and, and even in Ardo County that church is not much, there's not a lot of unity in church. We've kind of become a, a me club. This is my church and we do it right and if you don't go to it, you're going to hell. I've actually heard that before. And so, you know, it's not about that. It's about to be kingdom. We need to be kingdom builders, not castle builders. And whenever you begin to look through the eyes of kingdom, things look different. Because when you look through the eyes of kingdom, it's, it's vast and expansive, and, and, it, and it has uh, more power, more outreach than if we look at castles. Castles, all you got is what's inside your walls. And one thing about a castle is they have a moat around it. Why? Keep people out. And unfortunately, m a lot of churches become castle builders instead of kingdom builders. And we want to be kingdom builders. We want, that's why we do uh, stuff with United Faith Alliance. That's why we do things for other churches. That's why we promote other churches' stuff here. You know, we've, um, you know, we're not uh, Church of God, but yet, you know, they have some things going on, so we're, we promote what they do. Uh, we're one of the few, most churches won't promote anything any other churches do they're afraid that your people might go there and you'll lose them or their money which is the real deal but here's my philosophy Listen, we're all in the kingdom we're all in the same deal if you can be blessed somewhere then go be a blessing but don't go be a burden if you're a burden just stay here and we'll get it out of you <laughs> right we'll turn you into a blessing before you go but most people that are burdens love to be burdens elsewhere so God bless them be burdened. <laughs> you need to realize something in the freedom that, that, that God desires for us to win the battles of life that we have. And you've got to realize that, number one, that, that Christ wants you free. He desires that you walk in freedom. You have to realize that he has supplied everything it takes to get free. He's already done everything that can be done for your freedom, for your peace, for your love, for your healing, for everything else. He did it on the cross when he said, it's finished. If it wasn't finished, he would have said, it's almost completed. It's just about done. It's all done, but. I'm going to die for you and for all your sins, but if you sin after I die for you, I'm taking it back. Yeah. Well, I know, but that's what a lot of people think. Yeah. It, either, either it's finished and completed or it's not. So he's supplied everything that takes to get you free. He's supplied everything it takes to get you healed. He's provided everything for you to not be broke and destitute. He's provided everything for you to walk in peace and in love and in joy and in happiness and live in a full life that, that glorifies God. You know that it glorifies God when you're happy? I don't know if you know that. God likes happy people. If somebody should make a picture of Jesus with a happy face on it, that would be more appropriate because God loves happy people because when we're happy, we're, 
we're saying that all is well with me, all is well with my Lord, and, and we're in a good place. We need to realize that we don't have to be bound under the law of the Ten Commandments or the laws that the, the church has placed upon us because God has set us free. Christ set us free. He's redeemed us. He paid the price for us to be set free from the curse of the law. And I know I keep talking about this and then because I'm really, really going to get there. And when are you going to get there? You keep talking about it every Sunday. Uh, when I'm going to begin to talk about the covenant, the Abraham covenant, and what God's blessing was desired for his people, for Israel. And it all was the precipice based on their ability to keep and do the law. If you pay attention to my laws and you're careful to keep them, then, that's the caveat, then I will keep my covenant that I made with Abraham and the forefathers. So, Christ fulfilled, he says, I didn't come to destroy the law. I come that the law might be fulfilled through me. So when we receive Christ, the law is done away with. And we live under the blessing of God, not the curse of the law. Which is good. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 says, For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ Though he was rich, though he was rich, for your sakes he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. That's confusing to a lot of people. He says, well, wait a minute, wasn't Christ, I mean, wasn't he wealthy? Well, I mean, he had disciples, they had uh, a money carrier with him, his name was Judas, he was also a thief, and he went through and and evidently there was a need because every time monies would come in, Jesus would just say, hey, here, distribute the, the, the finances to the poor. But Jesus says, although he was rich, he became poor for us. And that's why some people think that, that God wants to live in poverty. Well, that's, that's not true. It says, through his poverty, we become rich. And you can take that from any aspect you want to. You can take it from being um, rich financially, rich spiritually, or whatever. But, but we see that the crisis says the Son of God doesn't even have a place to lay his head. His purpose was, was not to, to have a comfortable place to live or whatever. His purpose was that the world would come through him and have the access to all the blessings that God has ever placed on his people. And we have that access to Christ. It says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. What's nothing? Nothing. And there's, there's nothing you should be anxious about. You know, uh, some of us have got surgery coming up in a couple of weeks. And we're anxious about it. You don't need to be anxious about it. God's got it covered. We may have received a bad report from the doctor. There's no reason to be anxious about it. God said it's finished, it's finished. If it means it's finished, it's finished. It's completed. It's done. You just have to have the faith to walk in and believe that, that he meant what he said. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses what? All understanding. Will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. A lot of us spend our lives worrying about stuff and things and situation. And the truth of it is, is that you will be anxious for that. But the way to keep that anxiousness from overcoming is that by prayer and supplication, supplication, giving God thanks. Giving God thanks. I had a situation happen the other day. I don't remember what it was. And uh, somebody was with me. I don't know who it was. But I said, this is a, this is a, uh, a James 1 situation. You know, be Rejoice, be happy, be glad. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations because it you know, works you know, patience and brings peace and all this other stuff. But I'm like, yeah, well, you know, we've had a James experience here today. And the James experience is just a situation that, yeah, okay, yeah, it looks bad, it's tough, there's some bad news, but hey, I'm all good with it. I'm happy. You ever known anybody that nothing can shake them? There's very few people in the world like that. There's a few of them. They're usually crazy. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. That's kind of a joke. They're not usually crazy. They, 
really are crazy. <laughs> but, but no, it's just, uh, I have a buddy of mine and, and, uh, named Rick, and this guy, it doesn't matter if, if uh, anything can happen. His car could blow up, his house could burn down, run out of gas. You know, uh, somebody shoot his dog. I mean, it really doesn't matter. There was nothing that could shake him. He said, well, you know, it's all good, you know. He's always happy and always good. It was a good guy to hang around with because nothing was shaking. And I asked him, how are you able to go through all this junk? And he goes through some junk that you go through and still able to be happy. He says, listen, he says, God's got it all covered. Why am I going to spend my time worrying about it or being angry or being upset about it? It just takes energy from me. That's not my job. It's God's job, and I'm going to let him do his job. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to let go. Of that. Or anxiousness will overcome you, and it will take you, and it will take you places that you want to go. You've got to believe that you receive the benefits of his promises. His promises is every word written in the book of God, in God's book. And whenever we begin to set up for the... Uh, begin to talk about the covenant, the blessings, and the promises that, that God has for us, it's hard to receive something that you don't know that you have. And that's where the church is a lot today. That's a, a lot of the church is in the place that, that we don't really know what all the blessings that God has and desires for you. Listen, you need to understand one thing. God wants you blessed more than you want to be blessed. And that's a fact. I mean, and, and it's, it's just, it's there. But you've got to believe that you receive the benefits. I had somebody say something to me the other day that, you know, why is it I can pray in faith for someone else to be healed, but when I'm sick, I can't pray for myself? I said, you don't have faith. You don't really believe what you're saying. Well, what do you mean? I do believe. He said, no, if you can't, if you can't believe for yourself, you can't believe for someone else. E either God has, has, has set the blessings up for you and his promises for you, or he didn't. So whenever you pray for someone, bless God, praise God. But also, God wants us to pray for yourself. The Bible says where two agree is touching anything. Sometimes you and God's are only two in agreement. And you've got to walk with that. Psalms 103, 1 and 2 says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Here's the problem. We don't know what the benefits are. You've got an insurance policy, and you've never read the contract. A lot of us are like, well, you know, maybe God wants me sick. No, you haven't read the benefits. You don't understand the benefits. In the contract with Jesus Christ, God doesn't desire. It's not for you to be sick. It's for you to be healed. Maybe God wants me to be poor. No, you haven't read the contract. You have an understand. You don't know what the benefits are. If you don't know what the benefits are, you don't know that you have access to them. Here's a, here's a, here's a, a, a thing for you, and I bet you most of you people do. Some of you don't. A lot of you will be going down the road. Everybody has car insurance, right? Well, you run out of gas. Who do you call? Friend. No, you don't. Call your insurance agent. Every policy has uh, uh, refueling for you. They'll even bring you gas. They won't even charge you for it if you run out of gas. If you got insurance, that's a benefit that you have, but yet you haven't walked in it because you didn't know. You didn't read the contract and know that you have that benefit. Do you know that if you break down on the side of the road, you don't have to call, you know, Johnny and my neighbor and my brother and everything else to come and change the wheel or, or to, to switch out? No, you've got a contract with the insurance company that says all you got to do is call this number and they'll come and change the tire for you. Now, if it's blowed out and you don't have a spare, you know, you're going to have to cost you some money. But if it's nothing more than changing the tire, it's putting a spare on, it doesn't cost you anything because you've already paid it because you have it in your contract. And I'm just seeing people's faces like, I didn't know I had that. <laughs> yeah, and I see people from time to time. Uh, there was this, uh, uh, this family in a van, and they were at the gas station. And uh, they needed, uh, they were trying to find somebody to come to pick them up because their car broke down. I said, do you have insurance? I said, yes. I said, do you know what insurance it is? Well, yes. Can you call them? Well, yes. We'll call them. They'll come and tow your vehicle for you. What? Yeah, it's in your contract. 
If you read it, you'll realize the benefits that you have. And it's amazing to me that we have so many benefits just in the normal life of things that we do uh, insurance and all these other things that we buy that we pay for that we uh, have many benefits but we don't know what the benefits are for us therefore we never have access to them because our cars broke down it ran out of gas I don't know that I have access to it so therefore I don't call and I don't receive the benefit well if I have a contract and it has benefits in it guess what I'm going to use the benefits because they charge you enough that they need to come and change your tire or put gas in your car or whatever. You've got to believe that you receive the benefits of his promises. If you don't know the promises, you can't receive the benefits. You understand? That's why I'm going to spend probably a month or two in talking about the benefits and the promises of God through the government of Abraham that has we have access to today because of his desire for us to be blessed. Anywhere in the contract with God, you don't see uh, that, uh, especially Jesus saying, hey, I want you to be poor, I want you to be hungry, I want you to be sick, and I want you to die. It's not in the contract. If you look at the contract we have with God, and, and I hope you guys understand when I use the word contract, what I'm saying. It says that I want you blessed. I want everything you touch to prosper. I want you to be favored above other people. I want your uh, income to be strong. In other words, I want your oil to be overflowing. I want your wine to be overflowing. I want your cattle to produce. I want just all the blessings of God over you. And I don't want you sick. I'm not going to put on you the evil diseases of Egypt on you. I'm going to protect you from that. And all the desires that he has for us. And it starts in Genesis and goes through Revelation. The blessing that God has for us. That he desires for us. If we could just have access. And we have access to it as believers. We just don't know that we have access. God doesn't want you downtrodden. God doesn't want you sick. God doesn't want bad things to happen to you because you did something bad. I just want you to know that. I don't know if y'all know that. But that's the truth. Just because you messed up doesn't void the contract. It doesn't void God's promise for you. Because this contract was paid with blood. It says in Psalm 68 and 19, Bless the Lord who daily loads us, loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation, think on these things. Selah, think on these things. This is, God's got your back more than you even know. He's got more desires for you to be blessed and to walk out in the blessings and the promises and the peace of God than you can even think of. Bless the Lord who daily, 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 daily loads us with benefits. The God of our salvation, think on these things. Mark eleven twenty two through 24 says, So Jesus answered them and said, He says, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you that whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things... He says, will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. This is the biggest struggle that most people have in life. When they get to the place, they have faith in God. Okay, I have faith in God. Well, then speak to the mountains. Well, uh, the mountain's too big for me to speak to. Well, you, you're never going to move it if you don't speak to it. I see people all the time that, that uh, and even in my classes that I teach and stuff like that, I'll have somebody say something negative and like, well, I'm never going to be. Yeah, you're right. You just keep speaking that. Your life will never exceed your confessions. If you're confessing that, my life is terrible. I'm never going to do this. I'm not going to accomplish this. You're right because that's your confession and that's where your belief structure is. Some of us need to change our belief structure to believe that God's word is really true and that he really desires blessing for us and he desires good for us, not harm. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you peace and a future. 
God's desires are good for us. And we've got to walk in it and believe it and walk in it and receive it. Luke 10, 19 says this. Behold, I have... I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. God has given us such a position of power that we have authority over the enemy. It says that right here, doesn't it? And over all the power of the enemy. You have power over all the enemy. Well, why do we let him win? Why do we let him talk us into losing? It started in the garden. Well, God really didn't mean that he was going to destroy you if he's going to die if you ate some fruit. I mean, what he really meant was that if you eat the fruit, you're going to be as smart as him. That's what he meant. No, that's not what he meant. But that's what he believed. Because that's what the enemy said. Adam had authority... Eve had authority. They just choose to believe not what God said. You lose the power of authority when you lose the power of what Jesus died for. The biggest problem in a lot of our lives is nothing more than the confessions that come out of our mouth. If you want to change your life, change your confessions. If you want to change your life, change your professions. It could say whatever you profess, it'll be yours. Whatever you confess, believe it is yours. But whatever you believe, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. Just think about that. What if everything we said was actually literal and it happened the minute we said it? Boy, I'd give my right arm to have a car like that. And then your arm falls off. I can't drive it with one arm now. Well, you said it. You said you would give your right arm to have a car like that. You meant it, right? Well, not really, but, well, you said it, so whatever you said, I'm going to give you. What if God was that, that specific that everything we said, he was willing to do immediately like that? You wouldn't be saying some crazy things that you say. Oh, I'm never going to get over this backache. You're right. You're never going to get over it. I'm never going to get out of this, this, uh, this debt that I'm in. Yep, that's right. I'm going to just keep piling it on you just like the government. I'm never going to have peace in my life. That's right. You're not. I'm never going to get over this broken relationship. That's exactly right. You're not. I'm never going to be happy in this life. Yep, that's right. You said it. Don't get mad at God whenever he fulfills your, your covenant, what you're speaking out of your mouth. I'm never going to be happy. Well, I'm never happy. Well, it's not God's fault. You, he stood, where two agree is touching anything, God will agree with you with anything. If you want to say I'm never going to be happy, God will agree with you. Okay, his desire is, and his lips said, that he don't ever want to be happy. Therefore, he'll never be happy. I'm never going to have joy in my life. Okay, good. I'm never going to get over this cough. Okay, now think of, literally, think about it. The power of God, it says, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, power of life and death is in the tongue. And that's what it means, is when you, you can speak life and live life, or you can speak death and live death, it's really up to you. Now listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this oversimplified. And gosh, i got to close. I'm not trying to oversimplify it because real life issues happen, real struggles happen, we do deal with those. But you do have the option to control what you, comes out of your mouth. You don't believe that? You ever been just screaming, hollering, just mad, yelling, cussing, and everything else, and then the phone rings, you say, hello? <laughs> don't tell me you don't have power over your tongue. <laughs> yeah. 
How are you doing? Oh, things are just lovely. <laughs> and having a great day. God bless you. How are you doing? Oh, just good. <laughs> and you hang up and you back. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> you have more power than you think you have. You have more authority than you think you have. <laughs> Absolutely. There is a time to be silent. But the truth of the matter is, as you say, well, it's hard for me because I'm in the middle of the battle to begin to confess the promises. It's hard for me to think about God's goodness. It's hard to think about God loving me. It's hard for me to think about that God doesn't desire for me to stay in this situation because I'm in this situation. That Sure it is. It is very hard. But you've got to control. You have power. It says you've been given authority, right? If you've been given authority, you've been given authority. And that authority you've been given, God will fulfill, whether it's a negative authority or positive authority. God desires your life to be fulfilled with overflowing with blessings. He says, behold, I give you. Who is you? Say me. It's me. I am you. Y'all didn't say I am you. I am you. There you go. I behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All the power over the enemy. All the power of the enemy. You can't have power of the enemy if you're agreeing with him. If you're going through junk, you can't keep confessing the junk you're going through because you're agreeing with the enemy. And the enemy's just laughing. You know why? Because he knows that the power of life and death is in the tongue. He knows that God you know, will give you the desires of your heart, and if your desires is negative, you'll get that. If your desires are positive, you'll get that. Sometimes you do have to wade through the stuff to get there. But you've got to, you've got to praise in the prison. Mm, well. <laughs> Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing means nothing. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. So when the enemy comes and, and, and lying to you and telling you that your life is terrible and everything's falling apart and I just want to be done with it, you tell the enemy, yes, uh-uh, my God's got a better plan. My God loves me. He's going to prosper me. He says he's going to meet all of my needs according to his riches. It doesn't matter what I see. It matters what I say. And we got to remember that. Amen. Tony, come up. Okay. Your joy and your peace and your love and your power has everything to do with what you believe. Because Abraham believed, it was counted, it says it was counted unto him as righteousness. Because he believed. See, there wasn't, Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. The law wasn't in existence. But because Abraham believed what God said, it was counted unto him as righteousness to be made whole, to be full, to be complete. And that's his desire for each and every one of us in our life. And we just have to believe it and we've got to receive it. At some time, you've got to stop speaking when the only thing you're speaking is death. God had to shut Abraham up for a while. Because he, he was speaking against what God said was going to happen. So he just made him shut up. So if the power of life and death is in the tongue, what are you going to speak this week? You know, speak with authority, speak with power, speak with boldness, speak with understanding. And it really doesn't matter what your circumstances are. And it really doesn't matter. And I'm trying to, not trying to trivialize that. I'm just, I'm just giving you straight up the word of God. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter where you're at. It matters is what are you going to confess in this situation. Paul and Silas, serving God with all their heart, thrown into prison. The mistake they made was putting them both together. Because in the prison, they began to sing psalms and began to praise God in the midst of prison.
and an earthquake came and the doors were open and the shackles and chains fell off. There's such a, 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 a principle in that story that whenever you feel like you're in prison and you're shackled by your ankles and your hands and you've put in a straight jacket, most of us want to just complain about it. But God says, if you will praise me, praise me in the midst of the storm, the chains and the shackles will fall off. But you've got to believe it. And you've got to receive it. With every head bowed and every eye closed, Father God, I thank you that you sent your son to the cross, that we could walk out in peace and love and prosperity and the blessings of God that you have for us. We just have to understand and believe them and receive them. But Lord, above everything, we have to begin to speak it, to speak the promises, the goodness of God in our lives because you said you will create the fruits of our lips. Now, Lord, we know that struggles are hard and situations are tough, but Father, we confess today that, that you have it in control. And I want to just ask you to pray with me. Just say, Lord, protect my tongue. Help me the minute that I begin to speak death, that I have to stop. I think, I'm choosing life. Mm. No matter what happens, I'm choosing life. I'm going to praise you this day. Thank you for loving me and saving me. In Jesus' name. And if you're here and you just, it's been tough and you've been struggling, I just, I just want to say a prayer real quick with you. That just, to, just to say, okay, Lord, I'm giving it all up to you. I've been trying to handle it on my own and it ain't working. Would you just say this prayer? Say, Lord, thank you for loving me. I'm giving it to you right now. I can't do it. If I could have, it would have been done. So I'm taking my hands off of the problem. I begin to speak the promises in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. God is good. Amen. Mm -hmm.